Welcome to Physics 2212 Lab 5, Magnetic Breaking with Faraday. The main goals of this experiment are to collect observational data of a magnet falling through an aluminum foil tube, computationally model the interaction in vPython, and compare the model with the observational data. The experiment findings are shown below, with the key finding being that the magnet falls through the tube in 0 0.724 seconds. Faraday's law is one key concept of this lab. This law relates the integral of the dot product between the electric field and the outer length of a closed area with the negative change in magnetic flux. The magnetic flux is equivalent to the dot product between the magnetic field and a defined surface area. For this lab, the third equation, which is a general equation, is used to define the change in magnetic flux. The electric field produced follows the same direction as the current induced in the length of the closed area, which in this lab is a loop. The magnetic force is also a key concept in this lab. This force on the current carrying wire is equal to the cross product between the length of the wire and the magnetic field, multiplied by the current. When considering the magnetic field on a wire loop, the magnitude of this force is shown in its general form by the second equation. Two other concepts are Newton's third law and Ohm's law. Newton's third law in this lab states that the magnetic force on the loop is equal to the force on the magnet by the loop in terms of magnitude, but opposite in direction. Ohm's law relates the current with the potential difference in the resistance. Importantly, the negative change in magnetic flux equals the potential difference as an EMF. Here is the visual model for this lab. The system is the magnet, and the surroundings include the aluminum foil tube and the earth. There are three forces that are assumed to be present. The magnetic force on the loop, the force on the magnet by the loop, and the gravitational force on the magnet. Here, the procedure for this lab is shown. Critically, five trials were conducted on the observational section of the experiment so that an average time could be obtained. In addition, the magnetic dipole moment from Lab 3 is used for the computational model. Here are the observational results. The average time for the magnet to drop through the tube is 0 0.724 seconds. To the right, there are some measurements for the tube and for the magnet, including the tube length and radius and the magnet mass and dipole moment. Note that the dipole moment is from Lab 3. Here are the initial conditions and constants for the computational model. These include the properties of the tube and the magnet found in the observational component of the lab. Note that the initial velocity of the magnet is the zero vector as it drops from rest. Here's the code for calculating the magnetic field and the change in magnetic flux over time, with the respective mathematical equations shown to the right. Note that the general formula for magnetic field and change in magnetic flux are used because these are the most accurate equations. Here's the code for the simulation loop, which calculates the force on the magnet from the loop and the force due to gravity to find the net force. The loop also updates the velocity and position of the magnet. Here are the results from the computational model. The result based on the magnetic dipole moment from lab 3 is shown on the left. On the right, the result is based on the magnetic dipole moment of 2.166 ampere meters squared. Using the magnetic dipole moment from lab 3, the predicted time for the magnet to drop through the tube was 0.435 seconds. This time is much lower than the observed time, which means that the magnet is dropping slower than predicted according to the simulation. However, when the magnetic dipole moment is increased to 2.166 ampere meters squared, the predicted time is identical to the observed time. Possible sources of error include the presence of contact and friction between the tube and the magnet as the magnet falls, which would result in a slower speed, not accounting for air resistance in both models, timing errors when determining when the magnet enters and exits the tube, and measurement errors from the limited degree of precision in the meter stick. If the resistivity decreased to near zero, the resulting resistance of the aluminum foil tube would decrease. As a result, by Ohm's law, the induced current would be much greater, and because the magnetic force depends on current, the magnetic force would increase. By Newton's third law, the force on the magnet would increase, so the, magnetic, the magnet would move slower through the tube as the net force on the magnet has a lesser magnitude. If there were holes or slots in the tube, there would be a disruption of complete rings in the tube, which decreases the induced current in the loop. This decreased current reduces the magnetic force on the loop or ring and the force on the magnet by a loop in the tube. As a result, the net force would increase in magnitude and be in the same direction as the force of gravity. The result of this is a higher speed of the magnet as it drops through the tube, which means less time for the magnet to cover the tube.